Now we want to consider what happens as x increases without bound. We are now looking at as x approaches positive and negative infinity. So if x increases without bound, then we're looking as x approaches positive infinity, we want to find the limit. We want to know, are the y values approaching a particular y value? We will also look as x approaches negative infinity, in other words, as x decreases without bound, we want to know, are we approaching a particular y value? In this case, this basically refers to what happens as we go to the very far right and very far left ends of our graph. So in example 13, we're asked to find the indicated limit. We want to find the limit as x approaches positive infinity. So we're looking as x goes very far to the right of our graph. So as x goes to positive infinity, what y value are we approaching? What we see is the graph is starting to actually level off and hover right above a particular y value. It looks like it's hovering right above the x-axis. The x-axis has a y value of 0. So as we go to the very far right, of, right end of our graph, y approaches 0. We also want to consider what happens as x approaches negative infinity. So as x values go to the very far left of our graph, so as we go to the very far left, we see once again that the graph is starting to hover above a particular y value. It starts to flatten or level off. And it looks like it's hovering above the x-axis again, where y is equal to 0. Okay, compare that with what's happening in example 14. In example 14, as x is approaching positive infinity, so as we go to the very far right of our graph, we notice that the graph is not leveling off. In fact, it appears as though y is also increasing. So y is going toward positive infinity. In this case, we would say that the limit does not exist. Okay, if we're not approaching a particular y value, then we would say the limit does not exist. Okay, um, here we want to do the same thing, but we want to approach negative infinity. So I'm going to go to the very far left end of my graph. We want to see what's happening. As we do that, we see that we come to an arrow, and this arrow is also pointing up. It's not leveling off, it's approaching infinity. So we're going to say that the limit here also does not exist. So as we go to the very far left of our graph, as x is approaching negative infinity, we see that y is approaching positive infinity. So in this case, the limit does not exist. Okay, so if we're not approaching a particular y value, then we would say the limit does not exist. Infinity is a concept, it's not a particular y value. Let's look at this example here. So here we want to find the limit as x approaches positive infinity of our function. So here's our function f of x. As x, as x is increasing without bound, what does the y value appear to be approaching? So it looks like we're getting closer and closer and closer to a y value of 5. So as x is increasing without bound, we go to the very far right of our graph and see if our graph is starting to level off at a particular y value. In this case, it's 5. All right, now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go look at negative infinity. So as x decreases without bound, let's look to the very far left end of our graph and see if we're starting to level off there as well. And it looks like we're leveling off at the same y value, hovering right below that positive 5 for the y value. So in this case, we're looking for positive and negative infinity. Um, as x approaches positive and negative infinity, we're looking for the graph starting to level off on either the right or left side of the graph. Now we want to consider finding a limit from a table of values. So this particular example is going to be really important for the rest of this section. I want to see what happens as x increases without bound. So in this case, uh, we want to use our calculator to figure out a few values. So notice here at the top, my x values are increasing. They go from 1 all the way to 100,000, which is very large. We could con continue to grow larger if we felt like we wanted to, but we're going to look at what happens from 1 to 100,000. So what's the trend of the graph, and what are the y values doing is what, we could, what we're caring about. So I'm going to say 1 over uh, 1 squared, putting a 1 in place of x into our function, and we get 1. 
1 over 10 squared and I get 0 0.01 1 over 100 squared and I get a very small number three zeros and a one one over a thousand squared We're starting to get really really small and I think we can start to see the trend here I have a uh, five looks like five zeros here in front so something very very small and we can see that as we, if we continue to go that we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller so it looks like the y values are approaching zero. So we notice that as x increases without bound, the y values, the outputs for this function, are getting closer and closer to zero. So they're staying very, very small. They are positive. It looks like we're hovering right above that y value of zero. So in a few minutes, we're going to talk about this idea here. We're going to call this one of our theorems. That if we have a constant that stays the same in the top of the fraction, the bottom of the fraction will continue to increase. And when the denominator of our fraction gets very, very large and the top of our fraction stays the same, then the y values get closer and closer to zero. So the value of the fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller and in fact gets closer and closer to zero. Okay, we're going to refer back to this example um, in the next video. Okay. The next example, we want to look to see what's happening as x approaches negative infinity. So I have small values that are negative, so negative 1, negative 10, negative 100, and then I increase in my negativity. So we increase to negative 100,000. So here we're getting very large negative numbers. So when I put these values into our fraction, so that's 2 times negative 1 plus 1 divided by negative 1, I end up with a y value of 1. So we're going to do the same thing with each of these values. We're going to put negative 10 in place of x. I end up with 1.9. Negative 100, I end up with 1.99. So we're just putting that into the calculator. And then as I continue to do that, I get 1.999. 1.9999 and then 1.99999. So what does it look like the y values are getting closer and closer to? It seems that the y values are getting closer and approaching a y value of positive 2. So the limit here would be a y value of positive 2. So let's go ahead and write our solutions here. So our limit as x approaches negative infinity would be 2. So our last table here, we're looking for the limit as x approaches positive infinity of our given function. So we're going to let x increase without bound. We're going to do 1 squared plus 1 divided by 1, and they end up getting out uh, a value of 2 there. 10 squared plus 1 divided by 10, end up getting out 10.1. Um, 100 squared plus 1 divided by 100 end up getting out 100.01 .01. then if I continue to do that um, my next value will be 1000.001 .001. and we're starting to see something about our values they're not approaching a particular y value in fact they seem to be increasing without bound I anticipate that the next few values will also be um, growing so y is approaching infinity, so it's increasing without bound. So in this case, we would say that the limit does not exist. Okay, so remember that we're sending x to positive infinity. We want to know, is the, are the y values gathering around a particular y value? If they're not gathering around a particular y value, then we would say that the limit does not exist.